Good morning, YouTube, and happy Friday. This is the end of my first full week of school, a full five days. Um, I'm exhausted, but it was a great week. I'll definitely fill you guys in a little bit later as far as like what I did with the kids. Um, but I do have to go and make a ton of copies. I have so many copies to make for both AP and CP, and I go one periods one through seven today. I don't actually have like a break until period eight. That's when my lunch is. So I gotta go make sure I'm prepared for those classes, but I'll definitely fill you in a little bit later about how I've been using Pogel in my classroom this year. Well, I made it to the end of the day. It was a wonderful day, a wonderful week. I am thrilled, like I always say in every video, I'm thrilled to be back with my students. It definitely has put the wind back in my sails and I hope you are all experiencing the same thing this year as well. So obviously I don't wanna make this video about how much I love being back in school, but I wanna talk a little bit about how I'm using Pogel in my class. Thank you to the person that suggested a video on this. You actually wrote a comment in one of my previous videos about how I use Pogel in the classroom. So I thought I would talk with you guys about that today. I've been doing Pogol for quite a few years now. Um, in fact, I was probably exposed to Pogol even before my student teaching. It was something that um, was really new and up and coming. Probably I want to say about, I don't know, close to 20 years ago, believe it or not. It's been going strong for quite some time. And so, you know, I took a couple of workshops and I was like, this is great. But, you know, I was a brand new teacher. I didn't really know what I was doing. And um, I worked in a district. My first job, I worked in a district. It was very teacher centered so I really didn't have an opportunity for the students to spend time you know working on things like Pogles for example I tried to kind of conform to what the other teachers were doing and then I found a new job and so when I found a new job and I was like okay I need to find another way for the students to learn because honestly science doesn't look like this I said okay one of the ways that I kind of feel comfortable teaching would definitely be using Pogol and so Pogol stands for process oriented guided inquiry learning it's a great way for your students to engage and explore information associated with different phenomena it allows your students to learn from models extrapolate information and then apply it to new settings and so I love the fact that you can take a Pogol and you can use it to understand and manipulate information and have the students share out and so that's a very common practice that I use even today I follow the full Pogel pedagogy so for example I make sure that all of my students have a role within their learning team so these are all my roles and I want to say about two years ago I did a video on the four different roles that I use in my classroom I will definitely link that down below but every student in the learning team has a role we talk about you know our team goals for example our team goal is to learn and help somebody else learn learn. Um, we definitely spend time talking about those interpersonal skills and how to communicate effectively. So besides Pogel teaching the content, it also allows the students to build up those soft skills, those interpersonal skills that will allow them to be successful everywhere in life. Now I've always used Pogel quite a bit in my classroom, but I find that I'm using it even more so now. The reason why is because at this current moment, we are in a push to incorporate some of the 5E model elements into our classroom. So I've been working hard to try and think, how can I incorporate 5E into my classroom? And Pogel has been an absolutely amazing tool to do just that. The five E's are engage, explore, explain, I think elaborate and evaluate, I'm pretty sure. I'm very new to the 5E model. I've never had any formal training on it. I bought a book this summer <laughs> and read about it because I knew that my new supervisor wanted us to transition into the 5E model. I really find that if you're using the 5E model, I would say that the Pogol falls into explore and explain because with Pogol, you can use a lot of vocabulary and help your students explicitly explain phenomena and help the students get a little bit more direct guidance on how to incorporate elements of the content in their explanations. I also find with Pogol that it also helps with the elaborate portion where your students can apply knowledge that they've learned to new situations. So I think that with the extension questions, every Pogol includes some sort of extension questions. It really allows the students to elaborate on what they learned and apply the different concepts that they've learned to a new situation. 
As far as what my cycle of learning is and kind of like where I put Pogol in, I do kind of follow more of the 5E model in that my engage step is really where the students are engaging in some sort of phenomenon. I'll give you an example. This past week, my students have been exploring gas variables, right? And the variables that affect gas behavior. We were able to start out our unit with a phenomenon, actually a bunch of different ones, to be honest. So we have these cute little bell jars. Um, you probably have seen them. I believe they're from Educational Innovations and they're they're awesome because they just work by using a syringe to pump out the air pressure in the bell jar and so it's a one-way valve and so my students were really exploring the effect of pressure on different things so for example we looked at changing the pressure the external pressure around a balloon we looked at changing the external pressure of a suction cup and all of these things the students were trying to explain the different phenomena one thing that I love so much about this is it really tied into our particle models that we were talking about last week so so my students were able to construct particle models for all of these different phenomena and do their best to try and explain how air pressure factors into each of these things. When I was talking to my students about the lab, I said, you know, this is going to be used to help us understand some of the relationships between pressure and then our observations. And so it was more of a kind of a time for the students to explore the information, play around, and really engage in the different variables that affect gases. From there, we transitioned into using the Pogol activity on gas variables. This is an excellent activity and I know that this particular Pogol incorporates the use of moles. However, we didn't do moles yet and I just told the students that that's just a number that we use in order to count particles and they accepted it and then kind of moved on. So our focus particularly was on the different um, variables that we're looking at pressure, temperature, we we're looking at volume and temperature, and then we were also looking at pressure and volume. And so our focus are on those three gas laws. We're gonna save the ideal gas law for a little bit later on in the school year. So that can help us review some of the gas terminology and content that they've learned. They were very receptive. I think the students had a great time with it. The Pogel did take a little bit longer than expected. I wanna say the Pogel took about two periods for the students to complete it and complete it thoughtfully. I really liked it because my students had another way to look at the different phenomena based on the gas variables. After I engaged my students in the bell jar phenomenon, then I was able to use that engage piece and relate it to now explore and explain. So my students were then looking at flexible versus inflexible containers in this Pogel activity. Um, they were able to spend time looking at the relationships between gas variables, focus focusing on independent and dependent variables. It even incorporated some mathematics, which I absolutely loved. So it really set them up for success with using the gas law as a more quantitative approach later on. It's also important to note that with the 5E model, you don't necessarily have to go through each of the different 5Es. I would imagine that probably everybody includes the evaluate piece because everybody is formatively assessing and summatively assessing their students. I would think that there is certain content that lend themselves better than others, you know, with doing the cycle of the five E's. So you may only get through three parts of the five E's, or you may choose to only do two or four. It really just depends on the content that you're teaching, the activities that you have, and what you feel you need in order for your students to learn the content and skills necessary to be successful in the unit. My teaching cycle at this point really just kind of throws the students into some phenomenon. So you can do, for example, phenomenaling experience or something that the students are going to be creating models for. And then you can kind of work backwards and try to relate what the students saw in the phenomenon by teaching the content using a poll goal. I find that this is a really effective strategy because the students are able to make connections to things that they normally wouldn't have if you were to do the opposite. So a lot of times when, at least when I was a brand new teacher, I would teach all the content and then I would have the students relate it to the phenomenon. And it really, like, it really was hard for the students to relate that information to the phenomenon because they weren't already exposed to it. And so they weren't able to get that deeper meaning and deeper thinking. I think this is a really amazing way for the students to learn. And I feel like it's really helped them to understand the importance of models and how we use models and really just the scientific process. That is it for me. I am exhausted. I am going to head home. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. I look forward to reading your comments on this video. I hope it was helpful in learning about how I incorporate Pogol in the classroom. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you all next week.